My name is Jeff Morgan. I am in Georgetown, Texas today at the Williamson County Courthouse. And while I was waiting to testify inside on behalf of a friend, I met Cindy Heiner. And, or Cindy Rollins, Cindy Heiner Rollins. Yes. Okay. When I was talking with her, she told me about a specific situation she had with a child custody evaluator. I'd like you just to talk a little bit about that because child custody evaluators, a lot of people think, oh, we need these child custody evaluators. But I believe that a lot of these child custody evaluators either do not know what they're doing or intentionally misrepresent facts. And a lot of times they cause more harm than good. And I think that you've had some experience um, in particular with Dr. Alyssa Sherry. So feel free to talk about that. All right, my case was with Dr. Alyssa Sherry. Um, she was brought on board by my ex-husband's attorney. I was unable to make any choices in the situation, whether it was the therapy that they were receiving or the evaluator or court advocates. Nobody was by choice. It was all a list based on whatever they had already set up. And so in my situation, Dr. Sherry came in almost seeming really kind and, and carefree and, and just wanting to get the truth and wanting to do what's best you know for my children and at the end of the day she was very biased and the report reflects it in ways that are clear and in my opinion and my experience and my children's experience she was a clear and present danger not only to their mental health and our family structure but to their future so so I, I've not heard any one person. There was one person that may have been a little bit neutral with regard to Alyssa Sherry, Dr. Alyssa Sherry. Uh, but I have, other than that, I have not heard of any single person that have found her, that has found her to be a a good child custody evaluator. I think to a person, except for possibly one, they have said that she did cause danger or she caused trauma, she caused harm, and as you said, that she's a clear and present danger to the children. Uh, do you Have you been in contact with other people that have been with her as well and found the same thing? I have been in contact with a few. We are starting to come together as a group of survivors of Dr. Sherry. Mm -hmm. We are starting to compare notes and try to see just how almost cookie cutter the system has become in the sense of you could probably take my report and 10 other reports and the same mental evaluation that she gave me the same outcomes the diagnoses she would give those other 10 reports and so it wasn't something that was unique to me the testing the hours and hours the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars that it cost it wasn't a, an individual report it was just another stamp on a report she had already written when we took that report for my case it dropped on on the 11th of November on the 14th there was already a court date secured the judge had already decided what was going to happen on the 14th based on a report I had not even had the opportunity to open yet Wow that's amazing when we did open it <laughs> We were devastated by what she wrote about me and her personal jabs. It wasn't just a professional evaluation. There were literally personal jabs in there against me. And my, my ex-husband was found in therapy before I ever filed for divorce to be domestically violent. I, he had done all five forms of domestic violence against me and she wrote in her report that I manipulated the system before I filed the report or before I filed for divorce that I manipulated him that he was the victim and that every therapist that wasn't on their list that had been involved in my two sons case that they were biased because of my ability to manipulate the system. I was out to protect my children's best interests. They are my future, my life, my legacy, and there's nothing I'd ever do to harm my children. So for her to write this report that was so biased and so tainted and so cr just full of lies and venom, it, it, it laid me on the ground. I didn't know how to I didn't know how to react. I didn't know how to respond. I watched my 14-year-old son at the time wail in court. You could hear him. The judge had already decided. My son thought he was going to court to tell the truth and, and have his opportunity. And I wasn't even able to ever explain to him until he was an adult what really had really happened. happened. So my son spent four years struggling. My younger son, six years struggling with the situation. And they struggle today. So... I have heard people say that with regard to Dr. Alyssa Sherry's uh, child custody evaluation reports, 
that it was almost like a character assassination and that it, that it was so bad that they suffered for years before they finally were able to like confront it because it was just so, as you mentioned, venomous, mm -hmm. so slanderous, so much of a character assassination. Um, and was that your experience then as well? And how long has it been since she's done your, your child evaluation, your child custody evaluation? It was 2014 that she did it. As a survivor of domestic violence, it took me four years to get to a mental health place where I could file for divorce and not blame myself for not being good enough or strong enough or, or right enough to, to be loved. So for her to come at me after all the work that I did, all the work that I came through as a survivor, to be then emotionally abused and, and, and verbally abused by her statements, it, it sent me right back to, well, maybe they're all right and maybe my ex-husband was right to be a violent offender. And it, it, it's not true. But it's been seven years, and I'm, I'm back on my feet, but my children are not. And that's my biggest problem, that's my biggest concern, is how many children she's infecting with the venom, and, and how long and how many generations this is going to continue. Domestic violence, emotional abuse, uh, drug abuse, um, ways that my children had to cope that they would have never had to had she specifically not been involved in my case. So it's been seven years and we're still not okay, but I am finally at a point where I am ready to come out. My report is, I, I'm glad to share it with anybody interested in seeing it. I'm not ashamed of anything she had to say because it's lies. After her report came out and we only had those three days to do nothing because it was already decided, I signed in with a psychiatrist to kind of see how much of her report was right. Because again, as a survivor of domestic violence, you tend to think that maybe it is you. So once I met with the psychiatrist for, for a few months, she said, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder, complex anxiety, and complex PTSD, but it wasn't based necessarily solely on the domestic violence. It was the case itself. It was Dr. Sherry's report itself that pushed me over a psychological edge, and you don't come back from PTSD. You learn to cope. You learn to live with it. But had I not been, had she not been forced upon me in the family court system, I wouldn't, I would, I would be in a whole different place, and so would my children. Yeah, and that's and that's exactly what I've heard from other people is that it has been so. There's been so. You mentioned venom again. The the character assassination was so severe that it just sent people. And then of course, when you talk about the children, she is there to do a child custody evaluation, and she is damaging children. And I have to wonder myself because if you've looked at her uh, social media at various times, it appears that she is a very damaged person. So you have a damaged person doing child custody evaluation and maybe she's doing something reliving her own trauma or inflicting trauma there's something there that I don't trust her in the least and I've not heard of one person who really has it that would make perfect sense because the way she came at me about my alcoholic father and the way she described my relationship with my mother who's deceased for tw you know 20 years right. um, it, it was what what is the purpose of that in a child custody evaluation right. what is the relationship with my father why is forgiving him such a bad thing which she did make it out in the report. It was a bad thing that I had forgiven him and that my mother I had somehow martyred. Well, my mother raised me 100% on her own. So absolutely, I honor and respect my mother. So I looking now, I don't know what her past traumas are. I don't know anything really about her history because after that I had to shudder that part of my life and, and kind of recover, re recalibrate who I was and, and where I was going and how I was going to survive. But now that I'm coming out of it, I would be very interested to see, because I don't have any, any history of knowing about her, um, what kind of overlapping our childhoods had and, right. and why she takes it out on me, why she, takes, why she chooses her bias. Because as a, as a woman and a mother, you would assume she would look at someone who had the therapy records and the history, the, the documented history of domestic violence where he admitted to several things that he did during the marriage that was traumatizing to me and take that and turn it around to where it was my fault. It's it's unethical in my opinion. If she were a medical doctor, she would be under jail right now because she is doing no good and all harm. So I'm I'm impressed that she's able to slither through the system the way she's doing, and I am impressed that the system has not outed her for the damage that she's causing to the children. If the court's intent is the best interest of the children, 
where is that energy where are those results and why is the outcome nine times out of ten that these children are damaged beyond repair that they are going to have to struggle with the outcomes of her and the court system for the rest of their lives I know my children are you know um, I remember um, growing up you know the sticks and stones may break my bones and stuff like that but words will never hurt me but actually in this case that's not true words do damage and words do uh, almost kill in a sense and in fact the Bible says it that in our words we have the power of life and death right. and um, you know you talked about the medical aspect if Dr. Sherry were a medical doctor, like you said, she would have malpractice uh, lawsuits against her. You know, she amputated the left arm instead of the right foot. I right. mean, that's just the way that it is. But she can cause this untold trauma and distress and damage to kids and also the attack that have t taken place on the parents. Um, and I just don't understand why she is being protected so much. Do you have any idea why that could be the case? You know, today I heard a wonderful word, cobble. And, and there is a group, I, I bore witness to this group, I was handed a list of this group. By cobble you mean C-A-B-A-L, yes. not, not cobble together. Co yeah, no, no, there's a, a cabal. A cabal. A cabal. Okay, there is a cabal, go. East Got Texas. Um, there is a cabal and she is definitely a part of the system and it's a rigged system, it's a heinous system, it's a system you don't want your children, your spouses, no matter how much you, um, no matter how much you hate your ex, I can't imagine the amount of hate you'd have to have to put your children and your, and your family through this system. She, like I said, she is on a list. The judges have the list. Everybody in the court system has the list. And, and you're not allowed to get anybody. I, I, I had health insurance on my children. I said, hey, this, this therapist is covered under my health insurance. This is what I can afford. They said, no, you have to pay cash and you have to pay these people specifically. Those people specifically actually took me aside one time and told me, one specific lady took me aside and told me, the train has left the station was her quote the train has left the station and she couldn't report the truth she had to report what she was told was happening so I, I again I don't understand the inner workings because I am a simple person that really believed in the system and well, believed yes. I did I, I completely trusted that that good wins yeah. and now I've seen that no there are a group of people they work tightly together from the judges down and I don't know how anybody can go against them because even filing a complaint with her board, she was on the board. So how do you how, how do you tell the principal that the principal's doing wrong? You you yeah. don't. You literally just have to sit back and hope to God something comes up that that changes the direction. See, this is very very disturbing to me because if this were a case of rape, nobody would be defending rape. But in a very real sense, she has raped your children, you um, in the sense, you know, the loss of innocence, the lack of trust that you have, uh, the money that you've had to expend, it may not be the same thing as a physical rape, but it is a rape, it is a plunder, and um, it disturbs me. It's extremely disturbing that these boards do not exercise more um, oversight. This is actually the child custody evaluation system may actually be worse than CPS to some degree. I agree. I think so. I, I, I Having gone through what Dr. Alyssa Sherry has done to me, and then to find out, you know, you think when it happens to you, well, this is just a fluke, right? This is just somehow he was more convincing, and, and maybe I was an emotional wreck because I, the, the thought of losing my children, the coming out of domestic violence, the not yet having the strength to defend myself the way I could naturally, um, she took advantage of that right. and she used it against me and then she used it against my children and then she used it for my my abuser yeah. and so I, I'm left I'm left speechless but now I'm left standing going okay what can we do next because we if we don't come together and protect our children we don't know what the next generation is going to have and, and it's a, it's going to be up to us so I want to be part of the solution in any and every way I can mm -hmm. and I want everyone to to look her up to, to make the calls to, to talk to the to talk to anybody that can make a difference and let them know that our voices are going to be heard our cases I know for me again I will say anything I can offer on documentation I'm I'm happy to because now that I read parts of it and I see the lies I'm going she said I'd never I'd never introduced my children to my father 
and I'd had pictures from a couple of months ago before the report that showed my children with my father. And, and so I can prove that she's lying, blatant lies that make me look completely... Like a hideous monster. Exactly. So, yeah, I just, I want to be able to be part of the solution and I want her to, to take accountability and to get out of the system because if you know you're doing damage to children and my children they I know my oldest for sure is glad to attest to being a survivor of Dr. Sherry um, he, the corruption is real and and the need for the lights to be turned on is real and the system if it doesn't change how much worse can it get and how many kids how many kids are we gonna lose to the system to the to the jails to, to drugs and to suicide right Right. So the, the one thing that you mentioned there as well is, you know, perhaps you act traumatized. Or per, you know, you were tra being traumatized. And it is very, in, it's wrong when a person looks at you when you're going under the gun, when you're being traumatized, when you're being abused, lied about 100%. And they expect you just to like, well, thank you so much for your input. Yes. <laughs> Even though they are the enemy of you, they are the ones that are causing this, we're supposed to treat them as if like, well, thank you so much. And we have to or else she might rule against us. Exactly. She is an abusive person, she is. in my opinion. In my, in my experience. In my experience, the only thing worse than my ex-husband's violence was hers. And I think wow. hers was even more so because she is trained to do the right thing. She has an education that should have shown her right. She, well, she, she has an education that should show her what is really going on. Right. And then she should have the moral compass to know which direction to go. Well, the moral compass is the question, isn't it? I, I think there is no moral compass. I think that there is a financial compass, and I think that that's where, that's where the needle points. The needle points to the money, and I think that if we investigate the money, you follow the money, and then you will see exactly what is spearheading her and her associates. So with regard to the money, I know a lot of people have mentioned her outlandish fees. Um, how much did it cost you? $58,000. $58,000 for a character assassination. For a character assassination. And that was just her fee. That wasn't the fee that went to her therapists because I had to pay 100% of my children's therapy. So that's two kids seeing an individual therapist and then two kids seeing a therapist together. So it's three therapy visits a week. And she wiped me out financially. She wiped me out emotionally. And then when I left, you know, it was almost ironic that my ex-husband would say, well, you abandoned your family now. And then that was the turn. That was that was how he campaigned to my boys that I had, but it, yeah. I, I had abandoned um, I abandoned my children, and I had to go home to recalibrate. I had to go back to my hometown to get back on my feet emotionally and financially and start over because my whole life had been wrapped up in my family and my business with my family, and yeah, it, I mean it was it was financially emotionally draining, and she is I think she's more, she's worse than an abusive husband. Yeah. She's worse. Yeah, many people again. I've, I've heard of people that have said. Very, you know, okay, we almost had a camera fall there, so we're, we're okay right now. Uh, winds have changed. The, yeah, the winds have changed, exactly. And uh, too bad the winds of change are not happening in this whole crooked anti-family court system. Our legislature this session, I think, has really failed to address these issues. I, have, I know of legislators that are talking about child support from conception and stuff like that, which I think is a, is a hokey thing. There's a lot of issues with that. But the injustices right. that take place on a daily basis, and not just once in a while, on a daily basis throughout the entire state. Mm -hmm. And our legislature, our legislators seem to be, if not, I don't believe that they're unaware of it. I just believe that they're apathetic and that, that just doesn't rise to the level. But when these things happen, exactly what you're saying, the trauma is going transgenerationally, you know, it's going to be impacting your children. It is, it is right now. But another five years, ten years, how long is this going to last? And our legislature has really failed, in my opinion, to address these issues and to uncover and, uh, and to take action against this abuse. I agree. And, and I, I beg for the support and, and to just look into it. I think if you look into one case and then you look into two and then you start, it's going to be a domino effect where you see the damage, you see the trauma, you see, you see the corruption. And I'm sure no father would want his children to go through what my children went through, what dozens, hundreds of other children are going through, what, who will go through this. I think that if they, if they look at their own children, they look at their own families, 
and they imagine that it can happen to them, it can happen to your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. If you step up now, turn the lights on, switch the direction, and hold these people accountable, get people in that are qualified. I don't necessarily think it's an, an unnecessary you know, a placement of people, but I think that you have to have unbiased, qualified, honest people with proven integrity and a system that holds them accountable if they're not. Yeah, and, and I'm glad that you mentioned the grandparents and the great-grandparents, because grandparents, um, and I speak as a grandparent, we need your involvement. Um, this is what's happened to your grandchildren. You may be forever removed from their life because of a child custody evaluator like Dr. Alyssa Sherry. And she's not alone. She may be one of the worst ones and we may be talking about her. But we have seen this happen again and again and again. And so grandparents, um, some of you have political ties. Um, all the way up to the governor, in fact all over the place and you need to start talking about this issue what takes place in our family courts or our anti-family courts the family destruction industry what happens with these anti-family attorneys what happens with these child custody evaluators uh, i look at ourselves right now i think we're at a place that we to some degree are the last line of defense if we do not act now our children will will be forever punished because it gets to the place that you can no longer defend. Um, am I exaggerating this too much? Not at all. Not at all. My children are 18 and 21 years old right now. Mm -hmm. And my 21 year old, he suffers with it. My 18 year old, it's even worse. And I, f I, I worry about the mental health of my youngest son that was put through this situation. And there's no accountability. I mean, no, there's no under underscoring or how do you say that? There's no there's no way to overemphasize, to overemphasize yeah. how dangerous she is yeah. to the mental health, to the future of our children. And the other thing I'd like to mention as well to our legislat legislators is that you have the ability to regulate businesses. You can cap fees. Now, you may not want to hear this because you say, well, we live in a free market. This is an abuse industry, and you are permitting the abuse and the, and the anti-family mafia, the anti-family cartel, the child custody evaluator mafia, in a sense, they're almost a criminal syndicate. You are allowing them to thrive in the state. Shame on you once again. You have the ability to stop this, these outlandish fees, $58,000. And you- and you, on the low end. Mine's on the low end. I've yeah, I know. Where she's charged one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Yeah. And and that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And by and large, it is a canned report. It is. It's it's a you know fill in the blank name, and it's fill in the blank you know the diagnoses. Like I, I was learning, we're all similar. And and how do you have all these people from different demographics all diagnosed in the same way? Compare the reports. I'm sure most of us are willing to open up these reports and say compare them. Yeah. Because it's apples to apples who we are and we're not. So if you if you have actually been impacted by Dr. Alyssa Sherry, I think that uh, I've already that know that there is one group out there already, and I've seen testimony and I've se read some of the reports. But I think that this needs to be done. That there needs to be a group that that everybody can coordinate together and bring the case because she is, in my opinion, a very abusive and dangerous person. It's an abuse of power. It's an abuse of authority, and and it's abuse of of position, and it's a, it's one of the most heinous abuses on our children yeah. because there is nobody left to defend them right. but their abuser. So I also noticed today as she's waiting in the courtroom, as she's waiting in the halls there to go in, uh, I was very shocked because I was standing in front of her in the courtroom and I'm and all of a sudden I realized that's Dr. Alyssa Sherry. Um, the picture that she has on her website <laughs> does not reflect what she looks like right now. It looks like um, she is aged 20 years. And I'm not saying whether she looks good or bad, but, um, you know, I, I, I just, I have to wonder if that in itself is also not a bit deceitful and maybe indicative of a nature that is a bit deceitful. I don't mind people put in their best foot forward but I've seen some of these judges and other people like that and, and they present themselves as being almost beautiful or or something edgy or whatever yeah. but she looks really it's a catfish old. photo it, <laughs> <laughs> okay you're not the first person that said that about the catfish photo 
it's it's yeah it, it it doesn't reflect who she is and and it doesn't reflect her personality or her danger level you know it's a, it's a pit viper it's pretty to look at but it's it's lethal it's lethal in the hands yeah 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 well i yeah okay i won't go any further down that trail but anyway we are here right now we're here for a friend and dr Alyssa sherry from our opinion from what we've seen and heard has done the same type of abuse to him and to his son and we want to i'm not naming any names right now but this is an ongoing issue we have with dr Alyssa sherry and i think also too we've heard that some of these judges have appointed her as child custody evaluator again and again and again and yet and, and the family law attorneys they also used her so i have to wonder that does not seem to be she does not seem to be objective she almost seems like she's going to give an opinion that perhaps the judge wants to have right and once again she is a stranger she takes a few minutes that she looks at you maybe a couple of hours and and she has this canned report and that determines the future for you and your children sometimes for years to come sometimes it has a lifelong traumatic effect it's true it's it's very true i know for my family it's going to be a lifelong struggle that we're going to embrace luckily we have an open communication uh system going on where we're we talk about what we can when we can um, and i'm open with them but i know that as a victim of dr sherry other victims out there it takes a lot to overcome the shame blanket of uh, it's lead weight that she puts on you where you feel like well she's so educated and she's so loved how can you know how can anyone believe me and and you're left struggling with the the, the dirty ugly the, the feeling of rape and right. you're left feeling that just helpless hopeless devastated mourning loss of of who you were after you know before her and then you're left to deal with the aftermath of who you're going to become after her and and you're not alone and um you are believable it is not in the slightest bit doubted that you're telling the truth all we need to do is come together and make sure that the lights are turned on and that she's seen for who she is how she works and how the system is is being played out and it is a game it is a game and 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 we can shut it down. I don't want to play it. I want to shut it down. Absolutely. Well, Cindy, thank you so much. I'm going to go back inside because they, they may be calling me back as a witness and I've got some other stuff to do in here with regard to work. Thank but um, are there any other final words that you want to leave with everybody who's watching? I would just say stay strong. Don't let her don't let her win on who you are. You know who you are deep inside. And what she's doing is for money. It's not for the best interest of the child. It has nothing to do with who you are, what you've done, what you've survived. It just has to do with money. So don't take her personally. Take her down. Very well said. Anyway, and when we say take her down, we mean expose the fraud. Expose the truth. Expose the truth. I mean take her down in the sense of don't let her shame us all into the dark. Let's band together, let's come together, and let's l turn on the lights, and let's take her out of practice. Let's put her where she belongs, and it's anywhere that children are not involved in. She belongs anywhere children aren't involved in, and, and families aren't destroyed. Cindy, once again, thank you so much. Thank you so much.